Hello, my name is David Finney and I am a Big Fix technical advisor based out of Denver, Colorado. In this video, I'll be discussing Big Fix Web UI, what it is, and how to set it up. Before we begin, the QR code at the bottom of the screen will prompt an email, or you can see my email address just below my name there, so if there is any questions about what I've covered today, I'll be happy to follow up with you. Web UI is a highly graphical user interface that can be accessed over any web browser and is an alternative way of performing administration over your environment using Big Fix. You can perform most everything that you've done in the traditional installed console aside from forming groups, provisioning users, and a few other functions. You are still able to send patches, see the environment as a whole and its patch standings in terms of criticality, distribute software and many other functions such as relevance queries. Each administrator's dashboard is customizable to their liking for what they want to see upon their initial login. With this method of administration, it opens up um, to a variety of devices that you're able to perform your administration functions from, so there's no software dependency to access Web UI, which is a huge advantage because that also takes away the load up time of, say, the traditional console. If you've never installed Web UI before, it doesn't take much to get started with it. First thing to do is to find the fixlet that does the initial install and configuration of the service, which is found easiest by going underneath all content, then fixlets and tasks, and then in the search in the top right, go ahead and type in Web UI. Pay close attention to the description tab on the fixlet. Fill out all the information so that the configuration of the fixlet is ready before sending it. Wait for the fixlet to finish, and then I find it best to wait just a few minutes, and then you should be safe to navigate over to the new service. After the install, use your favorite browser to navigate over to Web UI using HTTPS and then the FQDN of the server where you installed it. Log in like you would the traditional console. If you are unable to log in, make sure that you check your operator permissions. This is your initial login page once the service has finished installing. Type in your credentials like normal and the next page will be your landing dashboard. From here, you can see at a high level your environment, such as your device overview, patch severity, recent deployments in the environment, and new release patch content. Most every piece of information on this page are navigational links to further points within Web UI. For example, the patch severity tile. You can click on the critical bar inside the tile and it will show you what critical patches are available in the environment. From this page, you can refine the results that are brought to you by using the left side of the screen area. I've expanded a few of those filters that you can go ahead and set just so you can get an idea of what you can filter against. And then from the list of patches that are available, you'll see the amount of systems the patch is relevant for on the right side of the fixlet that is represented by the number to the left of the computer screen icon. Just past that, there is a wrench icon that shows you how many actions this particular patch already has actions open against it. You can feel free to click on the patch or uh, any of the navigational points to the right of it in order to dig further into it, but for now I'm going to show you from the patch itself. Now you can select multiple patches to deploy here if you'd like, but for now I will work with just one. Just before I go and click on that patch, I would like to show you the show summary option at the top of the screen here to the right you'll see that uh, the type of data that's represented here is the same data that we have. It's just much easier to kind of digest what's going on and uh, may help prioritize what you're doing and what level of patches are actually coming in under what type of category. So this is pretty helpful information before going ahead and setting out to your patching. From here, you'll see a lot of good data on the particular patch, such as how many devices it's relevant for, information on the patch itself and the CVE IDs that are associated. If you wanted to deploy the patch, simply click deploy patch at the top right corner, which will take you through the targeting of the devices applicable and then framing up the execution. Uh, and then finally a summary page, which ultimately leads you to deploying the patch. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of walk you through that real quick here. I'm just gonna act like I'm gonna go ahead and uh, send out this uh, .NET patch here. Um, Back to that CVE data that we were talking about and deploy the patch here. And so I just got a couple of systems it's applicable for. We'll just pick on this compliance server for, for big fix and go on next on that. And uh, from here, you can go ahead and set the uh, execution 
framing. So if we wanted to uh, start at a future date, we'd uncheck this. Um, well, yeah, and then we can go ahead and set the times, the dates that we want that to happen. Uh, if you do set a future time, uh, pretty common to do something like uh, downloading the uh, required files now. Uh, that just makes it so that basically instead of, let's say you want your patches to start at 6, instead of at 6, it's starting its downloads and then its patches. Um, it'll already have downloaded its patches. And then at 6, it'll actually go through actually um, installing those. And then from there, um, another really common one to do, um, if you're dealing with like low bandwidth, um, uh, go ahead and ex actually staggering the uh, time of execution so that it'll reduce the network load. And uh, there is also uh, options uh, for required actions. Um, that's for another piece that we'll probably follow up on later. And uh, then you can also send this as an offer. Uh, which again is another method that we could do. Uh, the next most common thing on this type of deployment though is the force restart. Um, so you see you get a couple of uh, options that you can select here for your target. Um, you know, just making sure that you're getting it, the reboot that it needs to fully apply that patch. And from there, go ahead and hit next one more time. This is your summary page. Uh, feel free to change your title. Uh, really recommend it if you are doing multiple patches because it'll just say multiple actions, and we probably want it to be a little bit more clear than that. And then from there, you can kind of just see the summary as to everything, as to the way that we set it. You hit deploy, and then it's off to the races. Okay, back from the home page here, I wanted to walk you through a few navigational points on the top left of the UI here. The big fix icon will take you back to the home page. Uh, devices is where you will see a list of all the devices in your environment comparable to the computer section of the traditional console. Apps is where you will get uh, into more pieces of web UI and its capabilities. I'm gonna go ahead and start there. Start with the uh, content here. So from here, this is uh, very similar to what you would kind of see for a sites display. Um, so you'll see a couple of uh, custom sites here that I went ahead and created. And then uh, above and beyond that, you can of course drill down into this content any direction that you want. Uh, then from there, I'm going to go ahead and take you over to our patch area, which is going to give you a list of all the patches here. Now, um, I do want to go ahead and add out that you do have these filters as well here. Uh, we'll let you drill into the results that are coming back against your environment. Um, and you can go, you know, as complex into this or as filtered down as you want to into this um, as you'd like. And it'll just further kind of drill down these results. Um, another really handy tool is this summary here. Uh, this has been added to go ahead and kind of give you a little bit more um, visibility and a little bit better of a kind of a global idea as to what's going on in the environment. Um, especially when you're out here at the uh, million mile view, there's pretty much no filter set. It really gives a really good explanation as to what's going on in the environment and really gives a good feel as to what's taking place. Um, let me go ahead and jump over to the custom area now. And uh, with the custom area, this is going to be anything that you created um, individually or stuff that is going to be showing up underneath uh, software downloads as well. We'll be touching on software downloads again later, but you do also have the ability to create custom content directly here. So that does give you a lot of capability here. You can again drill down into the results that are being brought in uh, by refining the results here over on the left side of the screen. And then from here, um, I do want to just kind of touch on software distribution. Um, so you can see there's a couple different uh, items here that I've got, you know, built out. Uh, but, you know, one of the most important things is that you can actually build out another software uh, deployment directly from this user interface. You do also have all the refinements here, but um, again, kind of the same navigational points as you've seen traditionally. Um, but you can actually go ahead and add software and follow through the entire process here, and it makes a nice little software distribution package. And then, um, yeah. Basically last on this piece is back to the home page. And I uh, just kind of wanted to cover just a few items here, which is you can edit the dashboards at any point. Uh, so swap out you know, where these tiles are positioned, swap them out for different tiles entirely. You do also still have your ad software uh, directly from this link as well, instead of going through apps and software. Uh, and then you also have uh, going to the different deployment areas uh, and apps as well. So just a few little navigational points there that you can lean on. and. Perhaps that would be helpful uh, to kind of help in the administration of everything. Thank you for joining me today for an introduction to WebUI. I hope that this may have answered a few questions about it and its use.
There is much more being built in and expanded into WebUI's capabilities, so stay tuned to our channel and we'll keep making videos to show everyone what's new as soon as it's published. Thank you for your time today and don't hesitate to reach out if there is any questions that you might have.